In this tutorial, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install your very own set of air horns. Now, right here, I have a pretty standard kind of deal. It's a two trumpet system. It's made by Wolo, very popular brand. It's pretty much in every store there is. Eight auto stores, Walmart, wherever you go to get your auto parts. This is most likely what you're going to find. Um, also, my site, I'm no exception. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the standard. Unless you've got yourself a really nice you know manly you know kit with some crazy big compressor and you know elaborate horn setup but in my opinion they're all the same they're all electrically the same and that's really all that matters and that's what I'm gonna you know go over and explain to you on this tutorial how to do um, now with this system you got this right here which is gonna be your air reservoir your compressor standard two pin deal on the bottom they're, they're labeled plus negative to activate it two horns the longer one is going to give you, you know, a thinner tone, and then this one here is going to give you more of a substantial lower tone. The two combined is what gives you that tone that air horns are so well known for. Now, also in, in the kit, you're going to find that there's two nuts. The nuts are very straightforward. You drill a hole, you put it in, you take these horns, you slide it down into the nut, you tighten it from the back side, and it's mounted. Of course, whenever you mount these horns, you're always going to want to place them with the trumpet going downwards. It's okay to have them facing forward, but definitely not exposed directly to water, rain, or anything like that. That's just going to eat these things alive. These these kits, per se, these Wolo kits, even though this is what they would consider their premier ones, they're really not that premier. Okay, this is not stainless steel 318 gauge. This is called Ching Chang metal, looks pretty kind of stuff. This is designed to be under your hood at best. Um, once you mount it, you really have no business looking at it again. Because like I said, we're not getting into some fancy Hadley horns or some you know high-end Omega system. Very straightforward. The installation kit shows proof of that. One other component that's in here is this Y splitter. Y splitter, all that's for is to basically go in this, this air hose line. You would take this, you would cut it right around here. You would put the Y in this place, take your next horn, put it directly next to it, and then the piece that's left over is going to get mounted into the compressor. Now for my illustration, I'm just basically showing you all how to install it so we don't have to get that fancy. And I don't want to destroy this kit because I like to sell it to somebody down the road. So with that done, we can move on to the next part. So what? What all is left? We have just the relay. Now, in a standard car, you're going to have your horn button. Now, out of your steering column, you're going to typically find a thin wire. It's most likely going to be somewhere between an 18 to a 22 gauge. If you need to get a guide that shows you where the horn output wire is from your steering column, you could, of course, email us. We also have a free PDF which shows you over 60 different ways to take a relay and wire it, including fog lights. Um, it's a great resource to have. It's something nice to have in your toolbox. Everybody should have one. You should have a file saved on your computer. Even as much as I know and as many years I've been doing this, still to this day I refer to it and it's a wonderful thing. Relays are really cool. Speaking of relays, this one comes with a single pole single throw relay. This is the exact opposite of the relays that you find me using in most of all my tutorial videos. My relays are typically going to be five pin because they're double throw. This one here is single pull in, single double, a single throw out. So it's one in, one out. This is not a five pin. This is what you're going to typically find in any air horn kit today. Now, in order to wire this system up, like I said, on the bottom of the compressor, you're going to have positive and negative. Now, I'm going to use in my scenario for this demonstration, I'm going to use or assume that my car is going to have a negative horn trigger output, like most vehicles. Some have positive. But I can't go into that, but if you're interested in how that works, you can go look in my uh, YouTube channel on relay inverters. I have a video for everything. But for right now, we're going to use a negative output, which I'm going to use to trigger my relay. I'm going to wire this relay so that it's going to have power and it's going to have a negative in from the horn wire in the car. It's going to, this relay is going to switch it to 12 volts and throw it out to here. And I'm going to show you the right way, how to protect it, fuse it, and do it all. Let me get all my wires together. So the first things first, this one here I'm going to use 12 volts to, to activate the horn itself. So I'm going to take a piece of 10 gauge 
wire. The color of the wire that I'm using is really irrelevant. It doesn't really matter. However, it's a good practice to get into. I like to use black for ground. So, black's going to go there. Strip that back. This here, just in case you were wondering, this here is just the power leads. It's coming from my 12 volt power supply here on my bench. So I'm going to permanently ground the ground side of the air compressor. Okay, now I got this one here, which is my con my constant 12 volts. Now on the relay, the two sides, 85 and 86, those are your coils. So what you have to do is you have to apply opposing polarity for the relay to click. And when it does click, it's going to put whatever is on pin 87 out on 30, the output. So, I'm going to take this wire, which is going to be my main fuse 12 volt wire. I'm going to couple that with my power supply, which of course you won't have in your car because you're not using that. But you will be connecting it to the power wire in your vehicle. Okay, so those two are going together so far. That's going to feed the power to my relay. And I'm going to prepare a wire for the output side of the relay, which is pin number 30. It's always 30. And also, as a little side note, whenever you crimp, if you look inside the barrel of the connector, there's always going to be a break in the, the piece of metal. You always want to put a crimp on the opposite side of that because you don't ever want to get a bad crimp. So 30 is my output from my relay. Focus a little bit better for you. Again, crimp the solid piece of the terminal on the back. There. So that's my output number 30 from the relay. Now, of course, I'm going to put 12 volts to pin 87. So, of these two wires, this here is the wire is going to your vehicle. Then you're going to want to have a fuse in line. Always protect your circuits. I'm going to take that. It's on pin 87. And you're also need that same. 12 volt wire to go to pin 86 on this relay as well. So the 12 volts from the vehicle's constant 12 volt wire is going to 87 and 86. This wire 85 I left open because this here is going to connect to my car's negative horn output wire. So for, just for demonstration purposes this here is a ground. When I apply this ground to 85 86 is going to have 12 volts so that's going to cause the relay to switch and connect 87 to 30. And there you go. You can hear that relay clicking, and that's that's all there is to it to doing these uh, air horns. Very straightforward. Now, had you had a vehicle with a 12 volt output for your horn wire, you you would do the same exact job, just in the opposite on the coil side. 87 would still be constant 12 volts. 30 is still going to be the output to your motor. Instead, you're going to have ground on 85, and your positive pulsed horn output wire will go to 86.